Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about hyperspectral image classification in MATLAB. To do that, you need to first specify the end members in your hyperspectral data. And for that, I'm going to use a very simple method. And after specifying those end members, you could use them to classify your hyperspectral data. Let's get started and see how we could do that. As I said in this video, I want to talk about hyperspectral image classification in MATLAB. Before we get to the classification of hyperspectral images, we need to touch on some basic concepts. Hyperspectral imaging measures the spatial and spectral characteristics of an object by imaging it at different wavelengths. The wavelength range extends beyond the visible spectrum and covers from ultraviolet to long wave infrared wavelengths. In a hyperspectral image, the intensity values recorded at each pixel specify the spectral characteristics of the region that the pixel belongs to. The region can be homogeneous surface or heterogeneous surface. The pixels that belong to a homogeneous surface are known as pure pixels. The pure pixels constitute the end members of the hyperspectral data. Heterogeneous surfaces are a combination of two or more distinct homogeneous surfaces. The pixels belonging to heterogeneous surfaces are known as mixed pixels. The spectral signature of a mixed pixel is a combination of two or more end member signatures. This spatial heterogeneity is mainly due to the low spatial resolution of the hyperspectral sensor. Spectral unmixing is the process of decomposing the spectral signatures of mixed pixels into their constituent end members. The spectral unmixing process involves two steps. First is end member extraction and second is abundance map estimation. The spectra of the end members are prominent features in the hyperspectral data and can be used for efficient spectral unmixing, segmentation, and classification of hyperspectral images. Given the end member signatures, it is useful to estimate the fractional amount of each end member present in each pixel. We can generate the abundance maps for each end member, which represent the distribution of end member spectra in the image. We can then label a pixel as belonging to an end member spectrum by comparing all of the abundance map values obtained for that pixel. Interpreting the pixel spectra by performing a spectral matching is how the classification process is done in hyperspectral images. Spectral matching identifies the class of an end member material by comparing its spectra with one or more reference spectra. The reference data consist of pure spectral signatures of materials which are available as spectral libraries. The spectral libraries could be found online or just through someone who knows the pure spectral reflectance available in the data. Here I show you how to identify different regions in a hyperspectral image by performing maximum abundance classification or MAC. An abundance map characterizes the distribution of an end member across a hyperspectral image. Each pixel in the image is either a pure pixel or a mixed pixel. The set of abundance values obtained for each pixel represents the percentage of each end member present in that pixel. In this example, I will classify the pixels in a hyperspectral image by finding the maximum abundance values for each pixel and assigning it to the associated end member class. In other words, the spectral reflectance present in the hyperspectral image are assigned to one of the end members class according to how similar they are to them. So as you can see, the end members have to be found before the classification process starts. Because the end members specify the classes into which the hyperspectral image is going to be classified. There are different methods that one could use to specify the end members in a particular hyperspectral image, which is a topic for a separate video and I'm not going to cover that now. The simplest way to find end members is to choose the pure pixels visually and assign them as end members. This is not the most scientific method to choose the end members, but it is not the most inaccurate way either. So as you can see, I'm choosing these seven points as end members because visually they come across as pure. These seven points have already been chosen and saved. So now let's go to MATLAB and use these seven end members to classify this hyperspectral image. Okay, here's the code for this problem. I have already talked about how to read NV images of hyperspectral data in a prior video. If you would like to learn more about that, I refer you to that video. So first I'm just going to read the hypercube and I'm going to read the image, the hyperspectral image. I am excluding the last band because I noticed that it's all zero and I don't want to have zero in my data. So you might not have to do this. This might be only specific to me. 
and then here I'm saving the end members I have already located them and I'm gonna save them in the variable sig and I'm gonna make a new hypercube here in which the last band is excluded and I have already explained why and then I'm gonna use this built-in function to classify this hyperspectral image into the classes specified by sig I have seven classes this is where the class names are and then this is where I perform the maximum abundance classification and this is where I show the classification result using image SC and then I need this color bar to be like this so this is very simple it's not the most scientifically approved method especially the way I choose the end members but as long as you have someone in your group who knows where the end members are in your hyperspectral image you're fine you could do the same method okay let's run it see what happens so this is the result of classification. Let me also show you guys the original hyperspectral image. You can see that it's not bad, especially given that I chose the end members visually. You can see the seven classification maps on this hyperspectral image. So this was very simple, but in the future I plan to specify the end members using a more scientific manner and then compare the results to this video and see what happens when I specify the end members using a more scientifically approved method as opposed to this video in which I visually choose where the end members are located. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.